Welcome to Little Acre Gourmet Mushrooms. My name is Mickey and I'm here to guide you through your oyster mushroom grow kit, okay? So you might've bought this in a store or you might've bought it online and you'll have received something that looks just like this. We're gonna turn this box into some amazing bunches of mushrooms just like this, okay? So we've got multiple varieties. On the table here, we've got our warm white oyster and over here, we've got our pink oyster, okay? We'll touch on those in a second, but what you'll have received is something that looks like this. Little box and inside, is the organism that's gonna fruit our mushroom, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is open up the top of the box. And inside, you'll find your spray bottle. Very important because we're gonna to have to provide humidity to allow these mushrooms to burst out of the box. Put that to side for, one, for now. And you'll also find your instructional card, okay? So I'm gonna guide you through those instructions for now. So you can put that to a side. And inside, you'll see a block of white mycelium okay so what's going on in here is inside this plastic bag it's got something called mycelium which is the organism that's going to be able to fruit our mushroom okay and it's in a little bit of a hibernation now it's sleeping inside there but we're going to wake it up so what you need to do is seal back up your box okay don't take it out just leave it in there and flip it around and you'll see a recipe card really nice recipe here we're going to save that and you can see there's a perforation we wanna pop that straight off the side of our box. So with your thumbs, just give it a press down and this perforation will perfectly pull away. And you'll pull it off just like this, okay? Now we wanna save that recipe, put that on your fridge and you'll be left with something that looks just like this. So you'll have a block in here and depending on what species of mushroom you have, depends on how white it will look. If it's a pink oyster, it will look a little bit patchier than a white oyster. That's just the species that's growing in there. But you'll find something like this and now we, we need to open this up. So with a clean knife, what you wanna do is slice straight into that plastic bag, okay? Now, don't worry too much about having to cut into the substrate inside this box. It doesn't matter, this mushroom wants to fruit. So stick your knife straight in like that and we need to cut an X, okay? Now, cutting an X is very, very important. What this is allowing us to do is when we spray this with water, these flaps here are gonna cause a little microclimate to form. You're gonna see moisture under that, and that's perfect because the microclimate is gonna be the perfect conditions to grow these mushrooms, okay? So once you've got something that looks like that, you've got your spray bottle, fill it up with just some regular tap water, and you'll have it like this. Give it a few mists, and you've got perfect water there. Now you need to with your thumb or finger, just pull open the flap slightly, give it a couple of mists. Okay. And you can see that when those flaps cover it, you've got the condensation forming. So that condensation and that humidity is gonna cause little baby mushrooms to appear. So then what happens? Well, not a lot, okay? It's gonna look like this for a number of days. You won't think that anything is going on, but what's happened is you've exposed this mushroom mycelium to oxygen to light and to water, and that's gonna let it burst out. So you wanna keep checking this and give it a few mists every day. You just don't want this block to dry out. So underneath these flaps, if you can see that there's condensation under there, that's perfect. You don't need to keep misting it and drown the mushroom. The more moisture you provide actually can be not a great thing because it can actually get molds to start forming. So you wanna provide just the right amount. And if you can see moisture underneath those flaps, you're onto a winner. So you just wanna put that aside, maybe in your kitchen, in a nice airy space in your laundry, somewhere where you can notice it, okay? Because you don't, you wanna keep your eye on it because when baby mushrooms start to form, they're gonna double in size every 24 hours, okay? So you'll see little tiny baby mushrooms or what we call primordia forming, and then you'll notice them, give them a bit of a mist, and they'll soon start bursting straight from this block here, and you'll form mushrooms that look just like this, okay? So in terms of these two types of mushrooms, this is our warm white mushroom. And you can see that it's looking more brown than white at the moment. And there's a reason for that. It's because of the temperature that it's grown at. It's winter here, and this is a little bit cold for this mushroom. And what happens is for this mushroom, the cooler temperatures actually brings its color out. So if you grow the warm white at a warm temperature, it's gonna look more white. So that's completely normal and it tastes just the same, but it very looks great as a little caramel mushroom as well. Over here, you've got your pink oyster. 
Now, these guys are super fast. These You may have pink oyster looks like this in just seven days. So they just burst from the box, whereas your warm white can take up to 14 days or longer to form. So don't worry if you've got two kits and the pink is forming and the white's not, it's completely normal, okay? The pink is just a faster growing mushroom. Now you can see this pink here, it's getting a little bit white and it's because once it's grown up to a size about this size and it's a nice deep pink, if you leave it for a number of days, it'll actually start to lose its color, okay? So you want to pick this guy as soon as it's got its caps that are upturning just like this. So both of these mushrooms here are really ready to pick right now because the caps are starting to upturn. If you let these mushrooms just keep growing and growing, what will happen is the caps will upturn completely and it will drop spores. And you'll come downstairs or come into your kitchen and you'll see a white powdery mass underneath your mushroom grow kit. That's the mushroom spores. So to try and avoid having to clean all of that up, you wanna try and pick the mushrooms before that happens. One note to think of is also, mushrooms actually store longer in the fridge if they haven't dropped their spores, okay? If you think about mushrooms growing out in the wild, once it's dropped its spores, it's done its job and it just decomposes. So you want to pick them at their top premium level and that's just as the caps start to upturn, okay? So we're going to pick these guys now just to demonstrate. When you're picking your mushrooms, you don't need to cut them off. You should not cut them off, actually. What you should be doing is just pulling them off the block and the reason for that is it's going to encourage more mushrooms to form, okay? So when you've got a block that looks just like this, what you want to do is just get underneath it with your thumbs and just pull away at the block and you'll start to pull away bunches of oyster mushroom. And you can see some of the substrate has come away on this block. That's fine, you just trim that off later. But you can just put that into a basket like this. And we've got a couple of bunches on the bottom here. Now we're left with something that looks like this. So what would happen if you just slice that off with a knife, you'd have the stalk still attached to the block and that's not gonna encourage this mushroom block to grow any more mushrooms because you've already just pulled all of the mushrooms off, okay? So you, by keeping the stalks on there is not gonna encourage more growth. So what you need to do is pull those mushrooms away and I'll expose that substrate. Now, if you follow our instructional card, it'll say to rest this kit. So what you wanna do is put that kit aside and rest it for a week and you might see more mushrooms starting to form here. If that happens, that's great. If not, you can actually soak this block in water. So it's all on the instructional card, but what you do, pull the block out of the box, get a bowl of water, and float this block on top of the water with the cut side down. So it would be floating just like this, okay? And what's happening is the moisture from the bowl is gonna go up into the grow kit, okay? And after, you just do that overnight, and after that, bring it out, make sure you drain any excess water that might've gotten into the bag, and you've rehydrated your kit, okay? Mushrooms need water, they also need nutrients to grow. It's gonna use up all of the nutrients it can and just keep making mushrooms until it can't anymore. But also one of the defining factors is moisture. So if you don't provide it with extra moisture, like soaking it overnight, you might not be able to get multiple flushes. But you'll notice it get lighter and lighter and the lighter it gets means it's running out of water. Okay, so after two or three flushes, this block will be spent. That's what we call a spent block. And you can just crumble this up into your compost or put it at the mulchy garden makes amazing mulch and compost, okay? Because the mushroom mycelium is fantastic for soil. So these are our mushroom grow kits. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight on how to set this guy up. And let us know, send us photos on Instagram, send us photos online. We love seeing people all around Australia growing our mushroom grow kits. So thank you.